The Xactech GPS system has the benefit of a GPS unit that is placed within the sterile field and a two-way communication stream with an active tracker on the coracoid base. The key to any glenoid placement is adequate glenoid exposure. So this is showing resection of the labrum, which I typically do 360 degrees around the glenoid to get adequate exposure. The next step you'll see after that is resection of the biceps tendon, which also helps get the posterior and superior labrum, uh, which will help improve movement of the humerus posteriorly to get adequate exposure of the glenoid. Also, we'll show scraping of the glenoid. I highly recommend to remove any remaining glenoid cartilage before GPS. This system is accurate to less than one millimeter, so even taking off a slight amount of cartilage is extremely helpful for glenoid exposure. You can see there too where I added the posterior superior tractor, which helps visualization as well when you're doing a biceps resection or any glenoid exposure. This is showing the scraping, which again, I think is highly recommended. Usually in arthritis, there's not much scraping that is needed, but in this case, there was a lot more cartilage than planned. Next, we move on to exposure of the coracoid. This, I am extending the incision slightly because it's a cadaver for adequate visualization, but you don't typically have to do this. With GPS and coracoid block placement, my incision is typically one centimeter longer and that's it. I don't typically go this medial, but I'm just doing that to improve exposure for this video. And then I'm removing the soft tissue overlying the coracoid, mostly fat in this video. I typically don't remove the tendinous portion of the conjoint tendon over the coracoid, although many do with a bovi to expose the bone, but I don't think that's necessary to do this technique. Once we have the coracoid actually exposed, again, doing a little bit more on this video than normal, we get retractors in place to help with the visualization of the coracoid just during coracoid block placement. Also, I release the posterior retractor there to prevent uh, tension on the axillary nerve while I'm doing the coracoid block. So here's a homen placed medially. And then if you need to in larger patients, I sometimes also place a homen superiorly to get adequate coracoid exposure. This patient's coracoid is extremely large. So you can see we have very good view with this retraction. And again, your skin incision doesn't have to be quite that large. Here I am pointing towards the coracoid base, which I exposed during glenoid exposure. And this gives me a better idea of where the base of the coracoid is relative to the anterior coracoid. Next, I am pointing at the anterior aspect of the coracoid base. This is where I'll be starting my medial screw for the coracoid block, which makes it easier to identify with adequate coracoid base exposure. As a surgical tip, you can aim the coracoid tracker towards the GPS unit, which will help improve visibility of the tracker to the unit. As you're doing that, you just need to ensure that the medial coracoid pin is aiming towards the coracoid base to get adequate fixation. As a surgical tip, I use a K-wire to drill a pilot hole in the coracoid to ensure that I'm in good coracoid bone prior to screw placement. Typically, you put the lateral screw in first, followed by the medial screw. But as a surgical tip, I prefer to put the medial screw in first because I want to make sure I'm in good coracoid bone and have good fixation. It also prevents a well-fixed lateral screw from being pulled up by a better fixed medial screw. So here's me putting the medial screw in first. In this case, we had adequate bite. And then secondly, I'll put the lateral screw in. Even if the coracoid block is not on bone, that's okay as long as your screws have adequate fixation. For the lateral screw, another surgical tip is I typically aim a little medial on the coracoid to try to get into better bone and get a longer bony trajectory of that lateral screw. Again, aiming the medial screw towards the base of the coracoid is critical, and you can see here with adequate base exposure uh, that my screw was aiming towards the coracoid base. And then I put the lateral screw in second. For the lateral screw, I typically aim it more medially to try to get a longer screw in bone and better bone medially on the coracoid. The other trick here is that you don't have to necessarily be on bone or suck down the bone completely. As long as there's good fixation on the coracoid block on the coracoid base, you'll have adequate readings from the GPS unit. At this point, I check the coracoid block to make sure it is well fixed. I do that by gently moving it anterior posteriorly and making sure it's moving with the scapula. Once this is all confirmed, you can proceed with GPS acquisitions.